Okay, this is going to be a very brief video about um, the information schema, the table, the information where you get data about the data. So I have a few queries here. I will put them on the blog. Um, we're going to start from just looking at the catalogs. So there are two catalogs inside of every database. No matter which database, if you look, there are catalogs. And there are two catalogs. There's ANSI and Postgres. So let's go back to Community Assist. The ANSI has a series of views that let you see system data. It's called ANSI because uh, that follows what the American National Standards Institute says is the proper way to look at system information. Postgres SQL catalog is an actual um, database of all of the meta information, the information about information in the uh, database. And these are stored in tables. Just as a side, if you mess with these tables, if you change the data in there, you could affect the performance of your database, even to the point of destroying it. So selecting from them is one thing, but you shouldn't try to change the data in there unless you know exactly what you're doing. So those are the two system data catalogs, ANSI and Postgres. A lot of the information is redundant between the two. It's a difference between a view, which looks at the data through a filter, and the actual tables. We're going to do most of our stuff from the information schema tables. Now, if you look at this, what you do is you do information schema. See, it's over there, dot, and then um, let's do the information schema. So I want to look at tables. So if you come down here, you'll see that there is a tables, right? And you can look at the tables. So uh, when I run that, we get a lot of data down here. There's the catalog, there's the schema, there's the table name, the table type. If there's any self-referencing column names, and there's all sorts of other things that are mostly null or Boolean in nature. We received, when we did this, if we look at this, we received uh, 202 rows because it's selecting not only the tables we created, but all the tables uh, that are in the system catalogs as well. So I'm going to limit this a little bit. I am going to uh, just select the table name and where the table schema equals public. And when we do that, we see all of the tables that exist in Community Assist. So, and they're only the Community Assist tables. Okay, so they're the only ones in the public schema. Now I want to look at columns. And again, if I do an asterisk in there and just bring back everything, there's a lot of information about columns. It goes on and on, right? And there's 178 rows because we're getting all the columns from all the tables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit this, and I just want to look at the column name from the information scheme and columns where it applies to the table grant application. So when I do that, I get just the columns and the data type for each of the columns in grant application. That could be really useful information if you don't have the graphic thing, the PG admin, and you're working from a command line or you're working remotely, you often need to know what the structure of a table is, and this will give you the names of the columns and the data types of each thing. Sequences are for the auto number, and this gives you the names of all the sequences in the database. Right? So these are the sequences that we created. These are the auto numbers that we've created in the table. All right, this is a combination of several things. So I want to see the column name and the data type and the constraint name and the constraint type. Constraints are things like primary keys, foreign keys, unique, uh, default. There are a lot of different constraints. So we're going to get that. But to do that, we have to do a combination of these. So I'm going to do information schema columns. And I'm going to join it with information schema table constraints. And we're going to join it by using the table name, right, from both, the, which is in both of them. So that's where we're going to join them. And we're only going to look for the grant application. 
and we'll order by the column name. So we'll put them in alphabetical order. So when I do that, I get all of these different things. Now, you'll see that the columns are repeated many times. Partially they're repeated many times because they have different uh, constraints. It repeats all the constraints. It's actually not a very good join in some ways. So it's, it's kind of a uh, Cartesian join with all the constraints. But it does let you see what the constraints are. I wonder if I did that it wouldn't be distinct, wouldn't help. Okay, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with the joins. So here, I want to do a couple from the PG catalog. So the PG, so we close the ANSI here, and the other possibility is the PG catalog. And it has tables. It has a lot of tables. It has 62 tables. I'm going to just look at table spaces. And we look and we can see that it has default, global, and test tables. Okay. Um, so we made the test tables one. I'm also going to look for extensions. Extensions are things uh, that we add to it in order to be able to do additional things. Like the table func is a necessarily necessary if you're going to do cross tabs. This is necessary if you're going to generate um, universal unique IDs. This is necessary if you're going to do hashing and crypto. And this is necessary for certain store procedures. So these are extensions have been added to the database. OK, so I think that's all I'm going to do. So basically, when you want to find system information, remember there's the information schema in the ANSI. And there's the PG catalog. Those two things have all the meta information for the entire database, all the information about information, the column names and the data types, constraints, uh, other objects. So they're really useful when you're trying to understand the structure of a database, particularly if it's one you didn't make. OK, so I'm going to kill that video, which is short.